In a circuit, if we need to measure the current in, say, a resistor, we can use a meter called an ammeter. We draw a circle around the capital A to represent an ammeter. How do you think we should connect this meter to the circuit in order to measure the current in this resistor? We should connect the ammeter to the resistor in series so they get the same current. To measure the voltage across, say, this resistor, we use a meter called voltmeter. We draw a circle around the capital V for voltmeter. How do you think we should connect this meter to this circuit in order to measure the voltage difference across this resistor? We should connect the voltmeter to the resistor in parallel so the voltmeter can get the same voltage as the resistor. Of course, we can connect the voltmeter to the circuit either this way or that. If the meters are ideal, there would be no difference between these two ways of meter connection. Now let's talk about ideal meters. An ideal meter is a meter that does not disturb the system when we take measurements of a system. For example, an ideal tire pressure gauge is one that can take measurement of tire pressure without disturbing the tire at all. Of course, such pressure gauge does not exist. No matter how careful we are and how good the pressure gauge is, the tire always loses some air when a pressure measurement is made. So an ideal ammeter should not change anything in the original circuit. How much resistance do you think an ideal ammeter should have? it should have zero resistance. So when we add the N meter to the system, the effective resistance in this loop would stay the same. But of course, a real N meter does not have zero resistance. A good N meter just has very low resistance. So when we add the N meter to the system, the equivalent resistance of this loop would increase just a little bit, and therefore reducing the current a little bit. An ideal voltmeter should not change anything in the original circuit either. How much resistance do you think an ideal voltmeter should have? It should have infinite resistance. So when we add the voltmeter to the system, it would not draw any current from this loop. Because these two elements are in parallel, they share the total current while having the same voltage. V equals to IR. They get the same voltage. That means the one with the larger resistance gets less current. So if the voltmeter has infinite resistance, it would get zero current share. But of course, a real voltmeter does not have infinite resistance. A good voltmeter just has very large resistance. So the voltmeter draws a very little current from the whole circuit. And the difference between these two ways of meter connection is that in this circuit, the ammeter really gets the current in the resistor plus the current in the voltmeter. In that circuit, the ammeter does get the same current as the resistor. However, the voltmeter is getting the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage across the ammeter. Depending on the circuit we deal with, sometimes one of these two can be a better choice than the other. Here I have a pair of classic ammeter and voltmeter. They are actually made of the same basic parts, and we will go into a little more detail in the next unit. Of course, we can also use these digital multimeters. You can change the dial and use it as an ammeter or a voltmeter.